Okay, so if you will, open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 11. I'm going to go from Luke's gospel and what he had to say about prayer, what Jesus had to say about prayer. But before I did, um, you know, uh, it's... Um, uh, we, uh, the reason why I'm going to begin with prayer on these three subjects, prayer, praise, and prophecy, is that I believe everything in the kingdom of God should start with prayer. That's where it starts. Everything we do for the kingdom of God has got to be birthed and bathed in prayer. And so I just uh, want to uh, give you some quotes from some awesome men of God and what they had to say about the value of prayer. Prayer does not equip us for greater works. Prayer is the greater work. If you are strangers to prayer, you are strangers to power. The great Billy Sunday. You know, how many know who Billy Sunday was? Look at that. One guy. Two, three. So check this out. Uh, Billy Sunday. This this, will give you a little church history here. So Billy Sunday was a high, really, really good baseball player in the early 1900s. A really good baseball player. Played in the major leagues. Very, not just a scrub, but he could play. And he got saved. And he gave it up. And, and was a traveling evangelist. And had mighty meetings. And many, many people saved under Billy Sunday's ministry. So that's who he was, and it's just a great quote. If you are strangers to prayer, you are strangers to power. If you say, Steve, I need power in my life. Well, get what? Guess what? Pray! Pray, and you'll get power. It'll be there. There's never been one time that I prayed either by myself or with other people, and I walked in a way, I went, God, that was was just a waste of time. It's, It's never been that way. Every time we've prayed, I tell you, one time we had a prayer meeting, an impromptu prayer meeting in a closet in the basement of Portland Victory Fellowship. You remember that? Uh, oh my gosh, man! We walked in there. Somebody said, "Come here, we got to pray. We got to pray." And 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 there was I don't know, there was a bunch of stuff going on. And we go, "Where are we going to pray?" And because it was like a, a, a you know kind of a what I want to say a private thing. And so we all crammed into this closet, and like eight of us are t- got in there, and the McClisters, and I can't remember everybody, but but man, I'm telling you what, that place like in Acts, it says the house was shaken. That room was shaken. We walked out of there and I thought, my gosh, that was a Holy Ghost experience. That was like the book of Acts. God will do nothing but in answer to prayer, said John Wesley. Is prayer your steering wheel or a spare tire? Is prayer your steering wheel or a spare tire? The great Corey Ten Boom. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Martin Luther. Anybody heard of Martin Luther? The Christian life is not a constant high. I have moments of deep discouragement. I have to go to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, Oh God, forgive me or help me. A gentleman named Billy Graham. Prayer does not change God, but it changes him who prays. I have been driven many times upon my knees by overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and all and that of all about me seemed insufficient for that day. 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Yeah, he needed prayer, all right. And you, so do you. Yeah. And so do I. Yeah. So my desire today is that you'll be stirred, that I could stir you to pray. You know, I, I mean, I've been, you know, we've been doing a fast here for 21 days. And, 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 and you know, it stirred me to pray. I don't, you know, I don't know why. I think it's really, well, I guess I do. I think it's just a work of the enemy that he can p- keep people from praying because God loves a praying church. God loves when people will come to him and ask of his help. It's no different than my kids coming to me and asking me for something. They didn't go to the next door neighbor. You know, 
They didn't go to my, uh, my, their uncles. They didn't go to their aunts asking for something. They went to their dad. Why? Because they feel and felt that dad could supply. And that God loved, that, that, that their dad loves them and wants to help them. He's not a sugar daddy because there's times I said no. But there's probably more times I said yes. My brothers and my family say, you spoil those girls. You just, you know, and, and, but not, not that much. I mean, but I loved on those girls and I still do. In fact, my son-in-law, he just kind of steps back when they leave, and then I just hug on Steffi, and I kiss her all over the thing, and then he's, he just sits there, and he just beams. And then I say, okay, take her now. Okay, thank you. But, you know, it's it, one of the hardest things to, and, and not only is prayer hard to just do, because the enemy wants to keep us off our knees, but it's hard to maintain a prayer life. It takes a discipline to have a prayer life. And, and just, just so I can uh, plug our men's meeting on uh, tomorrow night is Mark Walsh, who was just here. Mark is teaching on 10, uh, what is it? It's 10 ways to master discipline. And he got into this thing and he got on the first point and we were into it for a while. And I, I said, Mark, I don't think we're going to get this done tonight. And, and, and so we got to three, but, and, and we could, he could review those t- uh, tomorrow night, but I just encourage you men to, to come because it's, it's a great thing and it will help you when you become disciplined in, in every area of your life. You know, the reason why we're called disciples is because a disciple is a disciplined one. He's a disciplined one. That's why he's called disciple. Now, our enemy hates prayer, as I said before. And while Jesus prayed in the garden, what did the disciples do? They slept. And he turned to them and he says, couldn't you just pray for an hour? I mean, it's hard enough for people to pray for five minutes, let an hour. And so, then that's it. And so... This, the, the other thing that comes up with believers is, is this, is I don't know how to pray. Pastor, I just don't know how to pray. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it's just, it just seems difficult. Is there, is there some way that you can make it easier? And, and what I want to say is that isn't it awesome that Jesus, the disciples, were almost in the same place as, we, as people say, oh, I just don't know how to pray. And they said to Jesus, and we'll turn to Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples to pray. So they, these guys, these Jesus followers, they listened to they had just listened to Jesus pray, and they knew, well, John, he taught his disciples to pray, and they, we watched them. We could see how they prayed, but we want to know, John, and, and it's great, John taught them, but John was not Jesus. He was the forerunner, and Jesus had another method to pray, a, a model, as we, could, as we would say, on how to pray. So it's, he said to them, when you pray, say. So those first disciples, uh, they, they saw those guys. And he said, you teach us. Teach us. Like John taught his, would you teach us? Because they knew he can, that man can pray. This Jesus that we're following, he knows how to pray. And you know, when I first got saved, I had a guy that discipled me. And one time he said, he said to me, you know, you ought to, uh, we, I was going to his Bible study, and he said, you ought to come, you need to come to our prayer meeting. And I thought, hey, I mean, I'm just saved. And, and I'm around these guys, and, and uh, they're all, you know, I, I'm older than all of them. And uh, by about, yeah, five years. And they, uh, but these kids, they were just kids. I mean, I looked at them as kids because I'd hit 30. I mean, you know, when you hit 30, everybody else under you is a kid. Okay, so... They and but he invited me to this prayer, this prayer meeting, and it was on a Friday night. It was on a Friday night, and there was these guys. There was this guy named Mike and his wife Joni. He was my discipler, and there and I had a picture. Did that picture ever come up? Didn't come up. I had this picture. The, the Mike, the guy who discipled me, he had his 60th birthday a while back, and 
And uh, what, was, what was really neat is the other two guys that really were instrumental in my life, they all showed up to his birthday party. And we took a picture of all four of us there. And I have the picture, but I sent it, but we can't seem to pull it up. But that's okay. But what I learned from these guys, that, and, and there, was, there was about anywhere from eight to ten or so, and there are these two twins named Chris and Kathy McCormick. And then there was this this young little lady over here she was at that prayer meeting too and i i got to tell you it's probably one of the first times that i didn't talk i just listened because i didn't know how to pray and so i just listened and i tell you what these people could call god down in a room man i mean it was it was amazing i, I was just in awe I was in such, it was so powerful that I said, I'm going to be there every, I'm going to be there. And we did it on a Friday night. We did it on a Friday night. And, and then Chris and Kathy, they would, uh, and Annie, they'd start singing these songs. They would, so we'd start off with worship. And then we'd go into this prayer. And my gosh, we, it, it, we'd prayed for an hour, an hour and a half. It was, no, it was just amazing. And that's when I learned how to pray. These people shaped my life in so many ways, but the most valuable thing they taught me was how to pray. I mean, they taught me a lot of things, especially these guys that disciple me. But one thing I knew about these guys, pray. They had a prayer life. And so when we look at this Lord's Prayer, now it's called the Lord's Prayer, but understand, Jesus didn't pray this, okay? So what do you mean he didn't pray? Well, because Jesus didn't need to ask anybody to forgive him, all right? He was without sin. He was without sin. So he's saying when you pray, in, 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 in uh, Matthew it says, pray in this manner. So what do we do? Well, okay, let's look at the first thing. Matthew in, in Luke 11 he says our father our father now I don't necessarily pray this model but I just when we're going to go through this all these verses we won't do it today so we'll it's this is a series but I don't necessarily follow every single part of this model but it's a good place to start if you don't if you're not don't have a disciplined prayer life Listen, I've been there. I know. Okay? I have ebbs and flows myself. Everybody does. Most people do. Okay? But this is a good place to start. And the first place to start is, Father, hallowed be your name. And when he said Father, it's interesting when Jesus said Father, because the Jews at that time, they never addressed God as Father. He was Yahweh. He was El Shaddai. He was, you know, these other Hebrew names and, and that, that had uh, very high reverential fear. I mean, Yahweh, they never even spelled Yahweh. They, didn't, they, they wouldn't even say it. It was, such, it was the most reverential name that they had. But they had all kinds of names, El El Yon. I go on and on. But Jesus said, when you pray, say, Father. What was that? Intimacy. He is your father. Now, some people get a little crazy with this, and I'm not <laughs> they, you know, they'll call him daddy or papa. So I'm like, look, I, I, don't, I don't do that, okay? Because I think it's bringing him down to him. I think he still needs to be my, he's my father, but you know what? He's God, okay? He's not my dad. There's a big difference, okay? But so, but we want that intimacy with him that I can call him father. And that's what Jesus is trying to get across to him. He is your father, okay? And so then he goes on to say, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Now, this part, for me personally, I do with my prayer life. We do it here every Wednesday night. We start with worship. Hallowed be thy name. That's what he's saying right here. Worship him first. Praise him. Uh, you know, give him adoration. And when you do that, you are, you are setting, kind of, you're setting the atmosphere. 
I think that's the best way to say it. You're setting the atmosphere. And so that's what we do every Wednesday night. And by the way, if you're saying, or Pastor Steve, I, I, I'm, I'm one of those like you were. I, I really don't know how to pray. I encourage you, come here on a Wednesday night and you will just, just observe. Just observe how we pray. We pray the word. We, that's the most important thing we do is we pray the word. We pray the word of God, and we just pray over all kinds of different situations. I mean, we leave it in Rick's hands. We just say, Rick, I told Rick a, a year ago or more, two years ago, I, guess, I don't know how long we've been doing prayer on Wednesday nights, but I just said, you pray, and you get what we need to pray about for this church and for anything else outside of this church because we're kingdom-minded. We're not about just Southeast Christian Center. Amen? And so he will come and he will give us a list of things that we pray for. And, and you, you, I would just encourage you, just come and watch. You don't, and we're not going to say, okay, you pray now. I mean, I remember when I was going to this Bible study, it was a, first, a, a brand new believer. And Mike would say, he'd say, hey, uh, Daryl, open, open up in prayer. And he'd open up. And then he turned turn to, at the very end, he'd say, hey, John, why don't you close in prayer? And they all, all these guys were, were, they were all believers. I was the baby of the bunch. And I knew, I'm thinking, you know what? One of these times, he's going to ask me. I mean, I wasn't born yesterday. In fact, I'm the oldest guy here, so I got some wisdom. And, and, and so I just wait. So I thought, he, I know he's going to ask me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start thinking of what to say now. So, you know, we, I canned it. You know, I just, I had this thing. I was thinking of it over and over again. <laughs> and so he sure enough, he says, Steve, why don't, you, why don't you close in prayer? And I opened up that can and I, I, I did it. But, you know, it was all pre, pre-prepared. So, but we're not going to ask you to do that on Wednesday night, all right? But we do hollow his name. We worship him. We praise him. In Psalm, if you look at Psalm 100, and I just, uh, this just, there's so many psalms that talk about uh, praise and, and uh, giving God glory and honor. And, and in Psalm 100, oh yeah, I know what it is. It's, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. You know that, that old hymn? Psalm 100, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endures to all generations. So he says there, come into his courts with praise. Now, in the Old Testament, they would go to the temple to worship God. That's where everybody went to worship God. And, and, but now we can go right where we are. We don't have to, you don't have to come here to worship him. In fact, you just go, Jesus said, when you go into your prayer closet. So, you know, I took that literally when I first got saved. I cleaned out this closet. I got it all out of there. I got all my stuff out of there. And I went inside that closet and shut the doors and prayed like a fiend. And, and I, I thought, well, it's had a closet. And, you know, that's the way it was. But now Hebrews, in Hebrews 4.16, it says to come boldly to his throne. So you don't have to come in here. You just go wherever you want to be. You can be in your car. Hello? You can be in your car driving to work. You can just go to in your, you know, uh, if the kids are off to school or whatever it is, and you just find time to be alone with God and start to hallow his name. And when you and I put aside that time for prayer, you know what? That, uh, that God, when you do that, God is there. Remember? He's everywhere. So what I don't know. You know, I've done that and I didn't feel his presence. Well, so what? He's still there. The truth is God is everywhere. The, the, uh, the uh, uh, psalmist, I believe it was David, said, wherever I go, if I even go to the grave, he says shoal, which means grave. It doesn't mean hell. It means shoal means grave. Even if I go to the grave, you're there. The place of the dead. Even wherever I went at that time. I, you're there wherever I go. In fact, you know, when I was running from God, because I spent 13 years running from God, and I kept running, and everywhere I went, He was there. It didn't matter. In the worst condition I could possibly be in, some Jesus freak would come up and start preaching to me. 
or witnessing to me. Or I never forget one time of walking downtown Portland. I was so down in the dumps. I was depressed. I knew I was just going nowhere fast. And I'm just walking down the street like this, just, you know, and, and this guy just comes up to me and he goes, you need this. And handed me a track. And I was like, that's the last, I thought to myself, that's the last thing in the world I need. But it was the first thing I needed. So Jesus, God's everywhere. When you go into that prayer room, folks, whether you feel or not, you got to believe by faith. He is there. He is with me. And he hears me. And the Bible says that when we pray, and we pray according to his will, he hears the things that I pray, and I have the things that I pray for. You know, when we pray here every, and I've told you this before, but when we pray here every Wednesday night, you know what we do at the very end? We thank him. Why? Because Jesus said, whatsoever things you pray for, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. So if I prayed it and I believed I received it, then guess what? I have it. Oh yeah, I don't see it. So what? That's not faith. Faith says I have it. Hello? Faith says I have it. I can't, I, I, right now, I mean, I was just talking to somebody. And I said, you've got to believe God. He is going to supply all your needs. Either he's going to supply it or who else is going to supply it? You're going to trust in man? No. You're going to trust God. Just simply trust him. Now, then, so you set, a time, they set aside some time for worship. And, and, and let it literally come out of your mouth. So, Pastor, are you saying I, I should sing? Yes! Sing. Sing. Listen what what the psalmist said in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I remember singing that at New Song. You know, we used to do choruses back in the 80s. You know, bless the Lord, O my soul. I'm just singing it. Ah! And I wasn't always that way. When I walked in there, this little Catholic boy, when he walked into that charismatic church, I thought, oh my God, my dad, no wonder my dad's worried about me. I mean, there are people raising their hands and, and shouting. And, you know, there were guys with, uh, I mean, it, there was a, it was a rough crowd, man. There was some rough, rough people there. But I fit in. And when, when I started to just worship him, and it was weird, it was odd, it was strange. And, but there was something on the inside of me saying, I need that. I want that. I've got to have that. They're so, they're so joyful, and here I am, this, this you know, saved religious Catholic, ex-Catholic, and I'm just sitting there like this. You don't see me like that now. No, what happened? The Holy Ghost got a hold of me, and you know what else? I got a hold of Him. I started worshiping Him. The first time I, I started doing it, I did it by myself. I used to go, when I worked in houses, I, I, I'd go... Nobody's looking around here. Nobody's looking around. I go, all these people are jumping around. They're all dancing in, at the church. I go, God, you know, I just got to do that. I'm not going to do it in church because somebody might see me. And then I don't, you know, I don't want to be seen. And so I, 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 I went into this house. I can see it right now. And I was touching up this house because I was a painter by profession. And I get in there and I'm looking around and I drop the blinds. And then I just started dancing. I just started shouting. I just like, and I, oh God, I was free. <laughs> I was free. Here's, you know, we were talking, uh, Mary was talking about surrender. You know, it's a, it's a crazy concept, but when you surrender to something, then, you know, I was just watching this thing last night on this Battle of Stalingrad, and 90-some thousand Germans surrendered to the, to the Russians. Only 5,000 of those, by the way, came out alive. But they surrendered, and, and surrender's the worst thing in the military. It's the worst thing that, you, 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 it's degrading. But for the believer, when the believer surrenders, it's freedom. It's the crazy, it's the craziest concept. Are you saying if I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ and I'm going to be free? How can I be free when I'm a prisoner? Because he's a wonderful, wonderful king. And you're in his house. It's not a prison. It's a place of freedom. It's a place of freedom. That's a good song too. That's a good song right there, a place of freedom. So when we surrender, he, you get, you, the, the shackles break off. 
they break off so now Psalm 34 in Psalm 34 verse 1 I saw this Psalm 34 verse 1 I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes his boast to the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. But this, what, what the, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. So every time I meet with him, I start with praise. And I worship him. Bless the Lord. Oh God, I praise you. I worship you. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And your, your loving kindnesses to me. Thank you that it's new every day. And you just, it's, I'm just, that's how you do it. It's not difficult. And then Psalm, now here's the part. Now, here's another thing you could do. Put on, we said, well, I'm, I, you know, I'm not real comfortable. My, you know, like I can't sing very well. Well, uh, you know what? You can put on worship music too. Put on some worship music. Turn on the radio that has worship music. Do that. Set the atmosphere so that when you are, when you are beginning to ask God of things and forgiveness and all these things that are in the Lord's prayer it just sets the atmosphere now in Psalm 95 the King James I like the King James version of this but he said oh come let us sing unto the Lord let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation now notice it says sing and then make a noise why is that because some can't sing others just make noise okay I'm, I'm kind of both I, I, I can sing and then uh, then I can uh, I, I, I can oh I can shout yes I can shout I can shout with the best of them I can out shout Dion I, he, he tried to out shout me and lost his tonsils so, it's a true, true, true story he lost his tonsils at a youth camp he had to have his, count, uh, he had to have his tonsils removed because I out shouted him well yeah we're pretty competitive that's true so so notice that some sing some make noise but either sing or make some noise whatever it is but when you come to pray hallow his name hallow his name now I want to challenge you with a little something here and uh, and then but I want to uh, encourage you also so I'm going to go right here. Come on. Here we go. The earliest African converts to Christianity were earnest and regular in their private devotions. Each one reportedly had separate spots in the thicket where he poured out his heart to God. The several paths to these little prayer places became distinctly marked and when anyone began to decline in his devotions it was soon apparent to the others and they would kindly remind him saying brother the grass grows in your path yonder where's your grass is there any grass in your path okay start trampling it down make that path make that pathway to your prayer room make that pathway so that so that the enemy can't come along and say hey look at all that grass you don't pray at all oh no I do looky here yes I do and then here's another and this is to encourage you I got up early one morning and rushed right into the day I had so much to accomplish I didn't have time to pray troubles just trouble tumbled about me and heavier came each task why doesn't God help me I wondered he answered you don't ask Roy you know this I, I tried to come to God's presence I used all my keys at the lock God gently and lovingly chided why child you didn't knock I wanted to see joy and beauty but the day toiled on gray and bleak I called on the Lord for the reason he said you didn't seek I woke up early this morning and paused before entering the day I had so much to accomplish that I had to take time to pray amen we've got the time folks we really do it's just a discipline is all it is it's just a discipline and and you say well 
well, where do I start? You know what? I'd encourage you, just start with, I don't know, gosh, can, do you got 10 minutes? 10 minutes? You got 15? Have you got, have you got five? I mean, start someplace. You know, my dad used to, <laughs> when my brothers and I didn't want to go to church anymore, and he goes, you can't give God one day out of your week and that one day out of the week is one hour? And we're like, boy, that's a real guilt trip you're throwing at us there, Pops. But, I, I, you know, it, it, it was a Catholic way, Phil. But, you know, the thing is, my dad, as Catholic as he was, he knew I set this day aside for him. And it was a lesson he taught me. Now, I didn't always, I didn't like, you know, the, the services, because they, they were boring. And I hope to God they aren't here. And because uh, if they are, it's only because you ain't participating, because the Spirit of God was here today. Amen? So, I just encourage you, take that time, make a path. Make that path every day. Just start someplace. You know, what, what's that? You know, if you don't have a goal, if you have no, nothing to aim at, you'll surely hit nothing. So have a goal. Say, you know, I'm going to put this time aside and I'm going to, I'm going to pray. And, and I just encourage you as we go through this and we're going to get a, um, a handout that will show you just breaks down the Lord's Prayer, how you can pray each part of it and in, in your life. And it'll be, it'll be wonderful. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you right now. Thank you, Father, for teaching us, to giving us a Savior that could teach us how to pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us exceedingly and great promises that we can lay hold of. Promises for our finances, promises for our health, promises for our loved ones, promises and promises and promises for everything that pertains to life and godliness. Lord, you desire that we would take time to sit with you and converse with you just as we would with a friend. Well, you're our friend. You're our friend. Jesus is our best friend. You'll never have a better friend than Jesus. And he wants, he wants to hear from us. We pray to the Father in Jesus' name. And he hears us. And he loves us. And he has great and mighty things for us. He has a future. He has a hope for us. It's for good and not for evil. And he wants to unfold the plan. Unfold it. As we come to him and ask him, Lord, what would you have me do today? Order my steps, God, today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Just today, what would you have me do? And he will talk to you. He will talk to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.